This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, and to find out how you can volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read and recorded by Eric S. Piotrowski, FBESP.org, Madison, Wisconsin, USA. 15th of January, 2006. The Tao Te King, or The Tao and Its Characteristics, by Lao Tse. Translated by James Lega. Part 1. Chapters 19 through 27. Chapter 19, Section 1. If we could renounce our sageness and discard our wisdom, it would be better for the people a hundredfold. If we could renounce our benevolence and discard our righteousness, the people would again become filial and kindly. If we could renounce our artful contrivances and discard our scheming for gain, there would be no thieves nor robbers. Chapter 19, Section 2 those three methods of government thought olden ways in elegance did fail and made these names their want of worth to veil but simple views and courses plain and true would selfish ends and many lusts eschew chapter twenty section one when we renounce learning we have no troubles the ready yes and flattering yea small is the difference they display but mark their issues, good and ill, what space the gulf between shall fill. What all men fear is indeed to be feared, but how wide and without end is the range of questions asking to be discussed. Chapter 20, Section 2 The multitude of men look satisfied and pleased, as if enjoying a full banquet, as if mounted on a tower in spring, I alone seem listless and still, my desires having as yet given no indication of their presence. I am like an infant which has not yet smiled. I look dejected and forlorn, as if I had no home to go to. The multitude of men all have enough and to spare. I alone seem to have lost everything. My mind is that of a stupid man. I am in a state of chaos." ordinary men look bright and intelligent while i alone seem to be benighted they look full of discrimination while i alone am dull and confused i seem to be carried about as on the sea drifting as if i had nowhere to rest all men have their spheres of action while i alone seem dull and incapable like a rude borderer thus i alone am different from other men but i value the nursing mother the Tao. Chapter 21 The grandest forms of active force from Tao come, their only source. Who can of Tao the nature tell? Our sight it flies, our touch as well. Eluding sight, eluding touch, the forms of things all in it crouch. Eluding touch, eluding sight, there are their semblances all right. Profound it is, dark and obscure, things' essences all there endure. Those essences the truth enfold, of what, when seen, shall then be told. Now it is so, t'was so of old, its name, what passes not away, so in their beautiful array, things form and never know decay. How know I that it is so with all the beauties of existing things? By this, nature of the Tao. Chapter 22, Section 1 The partial becomes complete, the crooked straight, the empty full, the worn out new. He whose desires are few gets them, he whose desires are many goes astray. Chapter 22, Section 2 Therefore the sage holds in his embrace the one thing of humility, and manifests it to all the world. He is free from self-display, and therefore he shines, from self-assertion, and therefore he is distinguished, from self-boasting, and therefore his merit is acknowledged, from self-complacency, and therefore he acquires superiority. It is because he is thus free from striving 
that therefore no one in the world is able to strive with him. Chapter 22, Section 3 that saying of the ancients that the partial becomes complete was not vainly spoken. All real completion is comprehended under it. Chapter 23, Section 1 Abstaining from speech marks him who is obeying the spontaneity of his nature. A violent wind does not last for a whole morning. A sudden rain does not last for the whole day. To whom is it that these two things are owing? to heaven and earth. If heaven and earth cannot make such spasmodic actings last long, how much less can man? Chapter 23, Section 2 Therefore, when one is making the Tao his business, those who are also pursuing it agree with him in it, and those who are making the manifestation of its course their object agree with him in that while even those who are failing in both these things agree with him where they fail. Chapter 23, Section 3 Hence, those with whom he agrees as to the Tao have the happiness of attaining to it. Those with whom he agrees as to its manifestation have the happiness of attaining to it. And those with whom he agrees in their failure have also the happiness of attaining to the Tao. But when there is not faith sufficient on his part, a want of faith in him ensues on the part of the others. Chapter 24 He who stands on his tiptoes does not stand firm. He who stretches his legs does not walk easily. So, he who displays himself does not shine. He who asserts his own views is not distinguished. He who vaunts himself does not find his merit acknowledged. He who is self-conceited has no superiority allowed to him. Such conditions, viewed from the standpoint of the Tao, are like remnants of food or a tumor on the body, which all dislike. Hence, those who pursue the course of the Tao do not adopt and allow them. Chapter 25, Section 1 there was something undefined and complete coming into existence before heaven and earth. How still it was, and formless, standing alone and undergoing no change, reaching everywhere and in no danger of being exhausted. It may be regarded as the mother of all things. Chapter 25, Section 2 I do not know its name, and I give it the designation of the Tao, the way or course. Making an effort further to give it a name, I call it the Great. Chapter 25, Section 3 Great, it passes on in constant flow. Passing on, it becomes remote. Having become remote, it returns. Therefore, the Tao is great. Heaven is great. Earth is great. And the sage king is also great. In the universe there are four that are great, and the sage king is one of them. Chapter 25, Section 4 Man takes his law from the earth. The earth takes its law from heaven. Heaven takes its law from the Tao. The law of the Tao is its being what it is. Chapter 26, Section 1 Gravity is the root of lightness, stillness the ruler of movement. Chapter 26, Section 2 Therefore a wise prince marching the whole day does not go far from his baggage wagons. Although he may have brilliant prospects to look at, he quietly remains in his proper place indifferent to them. How should the lord of a myriad chariots carry himself lightly before the kingdom if he do act lightly, he has lost his root of gravity. If he proceed to active movement, he will lose his throne. Chapter 27, Section 1 The skillful traveler leaves no traces of his wheels or footsteps. The skillful speaker says nothing that can be found fault with or blamed. The skillful reckoner uses no tallies. The skillful closer needs no bolts or bars, while to open what he has shut will be impossible. The skillful binder uses no strings or knots, while to unloose what he has bound will be impossible.
In the same way, the sage is always skillful at saving men, and so he does not cast away any man. He is always skillful at saving things, and so he does not cast away anything. This is called hiding the light of his procedure. Chapter 27, Section 2 Therefore the man of skill is a master to be looked up to by him who has not the skill. And he who has not the skill is the helper of the reputation of him who has the skill. If the one did not honor his master, and the other did not rejoice in his helper, an observer, though intelligent, might greatly err about them. This is called the utmost degree of mystery. End of chapter 27